Hello and welcome to Dr. Joe's Health and Sanity Calls. For most of you, you know that I'm a professional speaker who helps busy people stay healthy, sane, and productive. And currently, I'm unemployed. <laughs> That's right, with all the speaking engagements uh, canceled, I am now um, well playing a lot of roles, including babysitter to my two-year-old granddaughter at his home. Just trying to juggle that with my work so my daughter can keep on her job as well. So I thought it was really appropriate, not just from me, but from the stories that I've heard from all of you, that you're trying to juggle so much. I mean, a month ago, I was one and Tiffany is one of those people, I think probably 5% of uh, adults that were working from home. And now it's like, what? Everybody? <laughs> Most so, everybody, yeah. Yeah, so here we are trying to work from home, trying to stay productive, trying to juggle a lot of things. And Tiffany is your gal. She works mostly with entrepreneurs to help them make money, save time, and have more fun. And I'm all about that. So her presentations, because I mentioned she's also a professional speaker, are on networking, referral marketing, and maximizing your time. And I've taken a program with her. We went through a kind of an online uh, course live and then also taped. But um, I learned a lot from her about time management. And goodness knows we need her help. So go ahead, Tiffany. Let gotcha. it go. Well, th thanks for having me. I thought I would start today's conversation. A lot of us now have all of this unstructured time on our hands, whereas usually we might be going to work 40 or 50 hours a week plus drive time, um, activities to take the children to, uh, even like going out to eat or being a part of a club. All of a sudden we find ourselves at home. And while we don't have the stay at home order yet in my county, the one next to us I just saw came out with it. So I'm sure I can imagine Florida within the next couple of days, we're all gonna be at stay at home for at least a couple of weeks. And it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's a good thing because we kind of get to relax and hang out and chill a little bit, but it can be a bad thing because we don't have that structure that we're used to having when we've got the, the routine of going to work or going, taking the kids to school that, and that thing. And so we have to be really careful to not waste the time that we have coming up. And so I think it's really important for us to kind of prioritize what is it that we want to accomplish over these next couple of weeks. And it doesn't mean that you have to do a ton of work things or house projects or clean up the yard. I was walking through the neighborhood recently and there are so many people that have so much yard trash. I'm like, the neighborhood might be really clean by the time this is all done. It could be that the priority is you want to accomplish a project with your kids or your grandkids. You want to read or write that book. There's so many different things that it could be. It's just a goal of let's come up with, okay, what is it that we would like most to accomplish during this time. And some of it's what do we want to accomplish? Some of it's like stuff we really have to do. <laughs> right, because some people are still working their job and they're expected to perform and, yes. and bring results. And so there they are torn between the kids knocking on the bedroom door, <laughs> trying to get some work done. So yeah. Well, and some of those same people are, now they're the, the, the home, uh, they're not calling it homeschooling yet. Uh, they're the virtual teacher. Or they're the virtual assistants. They're, they're having to like, educate their kids while they're trying to make money. And it can easily get overwhelming. At the same time, it's easy to be busy all day and get nothing done. And so what I think is really powerful for people is to come up with, okay, if you had to pick a couple of things that you wanted to accomplish over the next couple of weeks, what would they be? And maybe we'll even stop for like 10 seconds. It's, a, it's hard for me to stop, but like give them a minute to think about, okay, what would be some of my priorities that I want to get done? And Dr. Joe, maybe I'll ask you maybe one of yours for, for this quiet or this uh, social distancing time. What is, what's something you'd like to get done during this time? Oh, right now I want to let people know that I'm a virtual presenter. I think that's an important thing because they might have thought of me as only doing conferences and working with companies. And so when their needs for virtual training come up, especially when employees are stressed, I want them to think about me. So that would be my number one. Gotcha, gotcha, excellent. Anything else that you've got on your list maybe as a number two? Uh, to be a cool, calm grandma. 
because I, I used to watch Baisley maybe an hour a day, you know, pick her up from, from uh, school. So she would have a, you know, she'd get out of school a little bit earlier and take care of her so mom and dad could finish their work. And now all of a sudden I'm like part-time daycare provider. And <laughs> you know what, my job has changed and I have to stay calm for that. Gotcha. You know how that is. Right, I totally get you, yeah. Um, we had somebody here uh, that was, that shared, oh, I can't get to it, sorry. Yeah, Melinda was writing that her, her goals are to keep, to finish my articles and plant seeds in my garden. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, and so some of the things don't have to, it doesn't have to be like this huge project. It could be something, you know, let me plant the garden or let me write an article, let me read an article, read a book. Uh, read a series, watch. I mean, it doesn't even have to be like, I think there's something to be said about taking care of yourself as well. And a lot of the things I do for self-care, I'm not going to be able to do over the next couple of weeks. I can't go to the chiropractor. I can't go to the massage therapist. So I need to be stretching every day. So that's one of my goals over the next, one of my priorities is to make sure I stretch, stretch so I don't get stressed. Right. So I don't have all that weight on the shoulders. And so I think it's important for us to figure out, okay, what are, what are our goals over the next couple of weeks that fit in with our long-term goals? Then, because it's really easy to wake up in the morning and be like, uh, oh, here's what I feel like doing, or oh, I don't really feel like doing much, or let me just kind of meander around and do this or that. What I encourage people to do, and this is something I use all of the time, regardless of if it's social distancing or life is normal. It's actually called the Ivy Lee Method. And the goal is the evening before is you actually create a list of six things that you want to do the next day. I usually say these need to be six things that help you work towards your goal. So cleaning the kitchen, uh, I don't know that I would put that on the list unless your goal is to clean the entire house. Then that might fit. We want it to be something that's working towards your goal. So if it's I want to plant a garden, it could be I go to the store and or I order on Amazon the seeds to plant in the garden. You know, I could be if I wanted to spend more quality time with my granddaughter, I come up with a fun activity for us to do. Because like, I would not know what to do with a little kid. Uh, I would, I'm, I, I'm finding out that there are Instagram pages solely for that. And I never yeah. discovered it before. Yeah, I would have to go to Instagram or Pinterest because I'm just not around the little kids all that often. So no. it could be something as simple like as let me research that. So you come up with this list of things, six things to do during the day. And to me, those are my priorities. So I want to get them done to make it easy in order. And I just go through, I was going to show you my book. It's in the other room. I just go through, here are the things that I need to do. Let's get them done. And I try to be reasonable on it. Uh, it it's interesting. I am creating a an article for, for a better word, uh, it's going to be a PDF article that I'm going to use for a speaking presentation on Friday. <laughs> Nothing like flying by the seat of your pants, right? Uh, it's going to be 13. I'm doing that all the time. From right. It's 13 day. ways to motivate your referral sources via social distancing. Because that's not something I usually talk about, but now it's key. So on my to-do list for tomorrow. Who are you speaking to about that? That sounds something I So I'm speaking to a women's entrepreneurs group. And so it's going to be, it's about how do we work our network? How do we uh, leverage? I think the title is leveraging virtual networking. Yeah. Leverage virtual and, networking. And let, let me interject and, and just say, because we did get in the chat box from Melinda, who is really up on this, on everything coronavirus. She, she's a scientist, so she knows all this stuff. And like she said in her chat box, weeks. No, it's going to be way longer than that. And I think this is important for us to realize because if we think it's going to be two weeks, it's easy to let things slide and say, I'm going to be back into my usual routine in two weeks. No big deal. But you know what? I think we do. I think Melinda's right. We need to think about this as a long-term new normal and so it makes it even more critical that we listen to Tiffany. Yeah. I'm, I'm living in the mindset of Couple weeks, maybe we'll see how it goes. In reality, I'm thinking August or September, and I don't think I don't think we are where we were. We are never going to be again. We are never going back. I think society, it's not going to be completely different, but I think there's going to be dramatic differences uh, in what we were before versus now. 
I agree, I agree Tiffany, yeah. and I think once people get a taste of what they can accomplish working from home, we're going to find out more and more people are going to want to push for that. Right, right. I think we're going to have amazing opportunities. So as you're um, creating that list of the, the things that you want to do, have those to start your day. And it's easy for us. And I think it's really important for us to have these goals and to have work daily, especially if we're going to be here until August. I mean, it's one thing if we're taking a week vacation, but it could be, you know, I think the latest I heard schools are mid May now. Um, all the cruise ships have canceled. It's going to be summertime. So we have to make sure that we've got some focus. We don't want to look back and say, okay, what did I do during social distancing? I watched everything on Netflix. Whoopee. I, right. I, and, and don't get me wrong. I watch plenty on Netflix, Hulu, and Prime. I've got them all. Uh, but I, I don't think that's what the only thing we want to do. I think we want to yeah. do more than and do And I think, Tiffany, we need to give ourselves um, permission not to scold ourselves because I'm guessing last week there was a lot of that going on. And that was part of adjusting to this new normal. But you're right. It is the week. We're into week two for most people, maybe even longer. So it's time to buckle down and get some things done. Yeah, the first couple of days for me, like I had a speaking engagement last Tuesday, actually, that went on surprisingly. And I was like, okay. Uh, but as soon as it was done, that was my last thing. And I did kind of dip for a couple of days, like, mm. but then Thursday I got up and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go. Let's make this happen. I, I really don't want to look back at this and think I didn't get it done. And so I think it's important for us to set up each day for success. Now, if it's a Saturday and your goal that day is not to do anything, I think we have permission. We don't have to be working towards something every minute of every day. I do, I, I do confess I have bad habits. I love to read fiction books. I love to binge watch TV, so I'll do some of that. However, I think it's important for us to accomplish those things that matter most to us. And for some of us, it's just starting the day right, whether it's meditation, whether it's reading a book. Uh, the last thing you want to do is start your day picking this thing up. That really kind of sets you in the wrong mindset. And I'm going to talk about this in a second. Um, hey, let me ask you, what do you do first thing in the morning? What is your morning routine to so get... My uh, six seven. things that I ideally like to do, um, I, I want to drink eight ounces of water. I want to read one chapter of a business type self-help book. I do uh, my form of journaling called Imagineering. I do meditating and then I plank. Now my planking might only be 60 or 90 seconds, but I want to plank. And so it's a little uh, bit of putting that in. Planking is one of mine too. 60, oh really? Okay. And it's 60 seconds and it hurts. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do 90, congratulations. I was up to two and a half minutes and then I kind of got off the wagon, but I'm back on now. Um, so in imagine fact, if anybody else has got a nice morning routine that sets them up for success, put it in the chat box. Put yeah. It in the chat box. And speaking of the chat box, somebody just asked Imagineering. That sounds interesting. What is that? So Imagineering is journaling from the perspective of how do you imagine you want your life to be? So you write it out as if like you're where exactly where you want to be in the future, but it's first person present tense. So instead of journaling about what's happening, it's here's the amazing day that I just had living in my dream house, you know, living with that perfect, whatever it may be. And so it's just putting yourself in a very positive space. So for Melinda, would be you, uh, how would it feel when you get all those articles that you've got on your to-do list? How would it feel to get them all done? No, no, it would be, oh my gosh, I am so excited. I just crossed off the last article on my to-do list. Yeah. And I have free time to do the things that I love to do. Yeah, that's totally it. Um, so starting your day off, I think it's important, whether it's a morning routine like that, whether it's actually making your bed, they've done studies on how much more accomplished you feel if you make your bed in the morning. Uh -oh. this past, I'm failing that one. Oh, are you? I I'm, never I'm, make my bed. No. I know people are surprised, but it's something my husband and I agree upon. It doesn't bother either of us. We just close the door and don't look at it. I mean, I'm going to mess it up the next night. So I would love to hear about the research. Maybe that's my problem. I'm not. Yeah, really I'll have to. I, I'm sure if we Google it, we can find it. You know, it's a study. It just talks about being accomplished. And so maybe if making your bed is not your thing for you, um, I totally get that. Sorry, let me, my battery's showing low, but 
And I just saw, you know, and Melinda said, okay. that's how I feel about dusting. Yeah. Doesn't do the okay. Dusting yeah. Either. Dustings are a little bit different because you not as frequently, but they talk about um, making your bed every day. One other thing, like I've noticed that I'm doing this week is when I get up in the morning, I make sure I change from my pajamas to my day pajamas. Um, they're not, <laughs> sometimes I'm still in my pajamas, but it's just like, let me get up and get dressed. Even right, it's not just, your it's not your suit because we work from home and so right, we dress right. It's just my, but I'm just like I'm not gonna stay in my PJs all day long, even though it does feel like I'm just taking one set of pajamas for the next set of pajamas. But you're at least getting up and you're getting dressed. You're going through that mm -hmm. act. So I think it's important to do some kind of morning routine, whether it's breakfast, whether it's coffee, so that you're not just feeling and like for you're me, on vacation. I always work out first thing in the morning. Then I'm hot and sweaty. Got to take a shower, and then of course you're forced to get out of your pajamas. Then right, right? and then in your the energy wakes you up as well as you're invigorated uh, because of the shower and the the workout. So one of the things uh, I did want to make sure that we addressed is these lovely little electronic devices, which can be amazing and are horrible all at the same time. Because when it comes to us getting these things done. These are, these are bad, A, because we want to reach for it and be on it all the time. And I know, Dr. Joe, you and I were talking about social media and how easy it is to go down the rabbit hole. And it's like, oh, let me go look. And then I know for me, it's like 17 hours later, all of a sudden, it's like, where is the day gone? You're on Facebook the whole time. Yeah. So sometimes if I'm wanting to check social media, but I know I have other things I need to do, I'll set a timer. You know, I've got 10 minutes. I can check some social media. Let me take a listen and then I'll get off. So the timer will tell me to go out, get off. Also to eliminate the distractions, I recommend turning off all non-essential notifications. So I get text messages and phone calls are the only beeps and buzzes that come through on my phone. I can still check my email. I can still go to social media, but those little red numbers atop of the app logo just drive me nuts. And I'm like, <gasps> No, I don't want that. Like, I, no, please, no. And if I see it, I want to check. And exactly. you actually get, it takes the same way. four seconds to get back focused once you get distracted by it. So I recommend turning off the notifications and trying to limit your time here. Focusing hey, on this. Hey, Tiffany, can you yeah. take a moment and talk about multitasking? Because there are some people who are watching the news while they're trying to do an email or a phone call or whatever. Yeah. So the interesting thing is, and especially women have a tendency to think they're really great at it. Multitasking, we can't do it. The human mind cannot multitask. It's, it's not possible. We got used to that with the, um, with the computers because they do have the opportunity to, to, I apologize, my batteries, my cord's not working. All right, I'm okay now. We yeah, do what have, we're really doing is we're switching. Right, we're, we're switching tasking, back and, forth and we can between task two switch. Things. Like and every is going well. second or two, like not even a second, a tenth of a second, back and forth, back and forth, but that makes us tired more quickly. And mm -hmm. that's never fun. So I recommend doing one task and one task only to completion and then go to the next. Don't I, I always something. say, unless you're doing something that is so mindless, I guess, for, for example, for me, if I, because Melinda, you said you don't like dusting. I will actually, I'm on a phone call and there's something about the little swifter and I'll just go around and dust as I'm, there's something about the movement as well. And I do think I'm focused because like how much brain power do you need to dust, right? I think um, it's a repetitive. So Melinda, you do that, I don't know. When you, like to me, when you're walking and talking, you're not having to think about, let me move my, my step. But yeah, people are like, I can email and talk at the same time. Or as presenters, I'm sure you've seen this, Dr. Joe. People are like, I'm paying attention even though I'm typing on my phone. Your brain just yeah. can't do that. The only reason computers multitask is that they have multiple processors. And we don't. We just have And one we don't. Brain. We have one. And that's it. Yeah. Any other questions? Anything else you wanted to, me to speak to? I don't know. Let's see. Any, any questions from any of you in the audience? I'm looking at the chat box. So Melinda, you're not getting your article written because you're here with us, but I appreciate that. 
All right, so, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, having, uh, and I don't know if we talked about this before, but also setting up your office in a space that's quiet, having designated hours, uh, putting a note on your door. <laughs> Somebody was telling me they had a red, yellow, green um, card, or maybe it was a post-it or something like that. Green means, come on in, I'm just doing mindless things. Um, yellow means you better like, if it's better be good. important, red means don't you dare open this door. And I thought that was a really good, good thing I, to have for the kids and letting them know when you can come in and when you can't. Yeah. I think whether you're at the office in the normal times or you're here at the house, like before I got on this call, I told my husband, I'm like, honey, I'm getting on an interview. So, I mean, if the house is burning down, he can come get me, but that's about it. So to me, it's about communicating letting the people in your, your world know, you know, whether it's the signs up, uh, one, one woman says, her sign says mama's working so you can eat. Like, you know, leave us alone so we can, so you can get your food. Oh, like, okay. She's like, come on now, if you want to eat the good snacks, you have to let mama work. Otherwise it's broccoli and you know, all the things kids don't like. And I'm just laughing. She's like, oh my oh, gosh, you can funny. see them. They want to come bother me but they, they don't want the broccoli. And so for her, that, that sign was able to keep them away. That's a good thing to say to a, a registered dietitian. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm personally, I'm personally, I'm not a huge fan of broccoli. It's not that I don't like greens. Broccoli is just not my favorite green. So for me, it's kind of, uh. Hey, Maybe that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to cauliflower, some peas. And I'm not about perfectionism either. My granddaughter had a, a piece of a brownie this morning. You know, not a whole one. She's only two, but uh, yeah. It's moderation. So don't worry. I mean, I'm not perfect about that either. So, um, and, 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 I don't, and I don't want anybody thinking, oh my gosh, she's so crazy. I don't have kids. So I'm just, you know, here's what other people um, said. You can make brownies that are very, very healthy. They've got, they even have brownie recipe with green stuff in it. Hey, and you know what? Um, yeah, Melinda also said, get your kids in the garden. They'll eat what they grow. And I'll tell you, Melinda, this is a really funny story. Uh, my daughter, when she was 13, went to Outward Bound, not because she was a difficult girl, because I know they have Outward Bounds for that, but only because I just thought it was important at that age for her just to challenge herself that way. And we talked about it. It was one week camping, then one week on a a boat sailing in the Boston Harbor. Oh, cool. So anyway, this is something that will impact her for the rest of her life. But anyway, I remember when, when we got together after two weeks, because we didn't talk for that two weeks, one of the first things she said to me is, mom, mom, do you know where carrots grow? And I'm like, yeah. And she said, you do? Oh my gosh, I didn't know they grew in the ground. We went to this gardening place and we pulled them out of the ground and we dusted them off and we ate them and they were so good. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have failed. <laughs> as an and a dietitian that she didn't know that carrots grew in the ground. Oh my gosh. Uh, so I'll try to be light on myself, but I'll tell you, I wore that guilt for a long time. Thinking, that is funny. You need to spend more time in the garden. So you are right, Melinda. My daughter does eat very healthy, um, but that was just eye-opening. Listen, I don't want to hold you up any longer, Tiffany, but I, I did want to thank you for coming. If any of you have any questions, um, Tiffany's website is Tiffany with an I-E and Kellogg with no second G. Is Correct. that the best way of saying it? dot com okay mm -hmm. and if you have any questions i'll have it eventually in the newsletter might not be for another couple of days we'll be putting this up on the website that has all the recordings up on youtube as well so reach and if people if people are looking kellogg with one g dot and i'm easy to find on social media as well if you want to find yeah. me my name is uniquely spelled which works out pretty well yes i've noticed that you plug in your name and you're right there on the front page with everything, Facebook and LinkedIn and everywhere else. So thank you all for coming. I'll talk to you tomorrow at one o'clock as usual. Thank Bye, you. Tiffany.